I'm Marissa Valdez, and I am the Director of Performance Measurement and Reporting for Baylor Healthcare System. So I think we have a quote in the book that actually says you cannot um, follow what you cannot measure. So if we do not know how we're doing financially, quality, patient safety, any of the metrics that uh, you develop internally or that are publicly reported, we're not going to know where we need to improve. We're not going to know what we need to do better. We, um, there are a million insights that come from good performance measurement and reporting and analytics that will help us learn how we're doing and do it better. Uh, for a number of years now, CMS um, has started looking at readmissions as a marker of quality of care. We spend a lot of money in this country on patients who come back to the hospital uh, 30 days after they've been hospitalized for specific conditions. So at Baylor, we have been looking at the CMS reports, but also uh, developed our own internal uh, measure for readmissions to look at how often and why, what were the reasons our patients were coming back who initially came in with a heart failure, pneumonia, or an acute myocardial infarction. And we've been able to tease out a lot of information and test a couple of projects. If we don't know what our readmission rates are for our hospitals or why patients are coming back, then we don't know if one project or another improvement project are going to be the key to reducing readmissions. We are very blessed at Baylor to have a very robust team of people who are experienced and have the systems to dig into the data, to do a lot of data management and normalization so then we can take it and decide what we're going to measure. We work together with that department to make sure that we are defining the metric well, that it's clear to everybody what we're measuring. So the resource is invaluable to us. That allows us to then uh, work with our facilities, our service line leaders, our uh, chief nursing officers, and others to measure a specific aspect of the quality of care. Um, but I think it is important to ensure that there is a connection between those people who have access to the data that can pull it out of your system, whether you are going to use your uh, coding system, your EHR, um, your, uh, some of the vendors that we use to submit core measure data to CMS or others are invaluable sources of uh, that information that you're already putting in a system for um, your healthcare system. It's important to choose an area of focus, identify what you want to measure, find out if that data is already being collected somewhere, and start small. Uh, when you are <clears throat> in a small facility, you may be a standalone facility, and you may only have one vendor for core measures or patient satisfaction, use that data. Ha work with your vendor to give it to you in ways that it can be analyzed or looked at. Um, consulting services may be important for small initiatives, but even if you do not have a wealth of resources, I think it's important that you start small, you decide on an area to improve, and you begin making progress, even if it's slowly. We started measuring some of the process of care measures in the inpatient setting before CMS said they were mandatory. We wanted to know what uh, that care looked like. We started a strong patient safety program before uh, Medicare started measuring a lot of patient safety indicators. We knew what were the areas to begin exploring, to begin learning uh, in a very systematic, quantitative way how we were doing the power of collaboration, the power of information, and the ability to work with um, facilities throughout the Metroplex where one practice can be established and proven and improvement is occurring, and then we can carry it out to other 11 hospitals. So by virtue of our size, we are able to test a lot of things, measure them in small ways, and then move and make those larger initiatives. And I think that definitely gives us an edge. Ensure that you have good governance over your data. If you do not 
know how things are being collected. It's going to be very hard to enhance the data or normalize it. So you need to ensure that you are collecting things the same way, but not all, um, not all data collection is manual. We are all often using our administrative systems and our billing systems uh, to measure some clinical parameters and some clinical processes. Uh, so it's really important to go back to the way patients are being classified, coding, documentation is vital. The other piece that I think it's really crucial and we're getting better and better at it every day is uh, those of us in the analytics and performance measurement areas are often called after people have decided what problem they're trying to look at. I think it's important to engage the people that are going to be your partners in measurement and reporting at the level of the problem. What problem are you trying to solve? What area are you trying to learn more about that you don't know enough about? Because often we know different ways to measure something and we can save folks in the service lines, in the clinical departments, a lot of headaches if we're engaged at the level of the problem. And then we're able to guide the measurement piece or the definition of the measures piece before people get way out of the gate and they've already decided, oh, we know how to measure this, just put it in a report for me. That may be a little too late to get the analytics folks and the performance measurement folks engaged. I am hoping that they get inspiration for their own quality journey, for sure. But I would also hope that they can find some practical examples of areas to begin looking at in their quality journey. I know the book has a lot of chapters, and uh, the analytics and performance measurement chapter is only one of them. But if we really want to deliver care that is safe, timely, effective, efficient, equitable, and patient-centered, like the acronym says, um, I think we need to be willing to be very transparent. I think we need to be willing in the healthcare community to be vulnerable and learning from each other in this era of healthcare that is ever changing and will probably be nothing but change for the next 20 or 30 years, more than we've ever known. Uh, we're going to have to work together and we're going to have to tie to each other and learn from each other.